Hey everyone, this is Jill Hope, and I'm so excited to talk to Anna Kowalska today, who's going to come on and talk to us about embodying your soul purpose and working your business in the new 5D earth and uh, all things to do with creating success in a new way. Anna guides women to birth their highest soul level body of work so they can fully embody their soul purpose and live prosperously. Anna went from creating traditional success, which checked all the boxes, but left her feeling empty and lost, to creating a successful business and life based on her unique design. She is devoted to co-creating a world of harmony, unity, purpose, and prosperity within and without for all of life by activating new earth leaders. Well, welcome, Anna. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jill. I'm so excited for this conversation. Places we're going to go. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, me too. Like, I, I love this whole idea of doing business in the new earth because you're right. Like, they're, they're, we have to think about and approach our businesses in a new way because things are dramatically changing and they're changing so quickly. So I'm really excited mm -hmm. to get into yeah. this today. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. Well, as we kick off here... I'm curious though, what, what was, can you give us the highlights of your journey to create a, a six, you know, greater than six figure business? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So for, to set the frame from where I come from, I'll go all the way to my childhood. I grew up in a communist country behind the iron curtain and <laughs> came to America as a teenager. <laughs> I was lured by the the shiny life of the United States. And my parents asked if we wanted to come. We're like, yeah, of course, based on everything we knew, America is the place to, to be. And this was late eighties. So this was like, America was the shiny, shiny place to be. So, so I came from this very limiting, very structured, authoritarian, external authority driven life and world to America where anything is possible, but how do you do it? And who is it possible for? Because it wasn't possible for the people I was seeing every day. And in my 20s, I made some choices that led me to be to, be, to create tremendous success. So I tasted what it's like to live with money not being an object or not being something that decides anything for you, which I never knew was even a thing, <laughs> money making decisions for us. But that's how most people live until you realize and then you can make changes. So I was very, I had tremendous wealth in my twenties and then chose to leave it. And I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know any, of course, any of what I know now. And I look back and there are so many layers of everything that I learned. And I know there was a reason why I even had that experience. So I could recreate it, but recreate it differently. So when I left it all, it happened three times, by the way, three times I recreated wealth and three times chose to chose to leave it and at the time it didn't feel like I was choosing it but I did so I had everything anyone could ever ask for check 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 on everything and I felt like none of it mattered and I sat there and I'm like wait a second there is this girl growing up in a communist Poland dreaming about something she never thought was possible and then having it more than I could ever imagine shouldn't I feel better? Shouldn't like, shouldn't life feel better? People were envious and telling me how great things were. And I'm like, but I don't feel it. I was miserable. <laughs> so it set me out on a journey of if you have everything material, then, and it still feels empty and it still feels, I didn't know it then purposeless, then what gives? And I didn't know what to ask. All I was, all I knew to do was just to say, okay, I'm going to start from scratch. It wasn't fun at all, but I'm going to start from scratch and I'm going to seek whatever it is that I was missing. And I knew at a time what I was missing is the meaning behind everything, the purpose, right? The, the, the reason why we do anything, because you probably know you could do all the things. And if there isn't a reason behind it, if there isn't a meaning behind it, then it really doesn't matter, which I think where a lot of people find themselves right now, where there are so many changes happening energetically on planet earth, physically on planet earth with economy, with politics, with cultures, everybody is questioning what is going on. I mean, global warming, however we feel about it, it is getting hotter and hotter every day. <laughs> so things are changing and things that we cannot deny. But one of the most 
to me, one of the most critical things that is changing is how we approach the, li- the how we live life, going from making money to live, making money to pay bills, and s- s- pretty much creating a life around it, which is what a lot of people in America did. And a lot of people who came to America sought the same thing, right? So this the dream life, but basically wrapped themselves around working till retirement, working for the weekend, working to pay the bills, right? So with all of that changing, we are ascending spiritually. New earth is being birthed. And it's not a different planet. It's just a different frequency, different experience of ourselves and life on planet earth. And with that will come a new way of how we exchange our energy for what we need, which is basically what business is, right? I have something and people need it. And if I stand in a value of it, then I create something people now give me money for or whatever the as the agreed upon tender is, which right now is money. Like it or not, it's money and it's not going to go away until we embrace it. So <laughs> we get to start doing it differently because whether we like it or not, we cannot stop what's happening energetically on planet Earth. Yes. How was that? <laughs> oh my God. I, I love I so many, so many layers here that I would love to dive into. Um, and I so relate to what you're saying about the, cause you know, I was in co- a corporate job too. And like we had, we could do what we wanted. We went on all these amazing yeah. vacations. We like, we did all this cool stuff. We'd go out to all the best restaurants, mm-hmm. you know, but I, my soul, like I, I got to the point where I was like, why am I spending all of my time on someone else's agenda and someone else's objectives to make rich people get richer. But like, who is it helping? (laughs) And so that was when I like, I I probably didn't think about it the way you did, but I I moved in that direction because I got this download of something to create. It was totally soul and like purpose based. And I'm like, I have to do it. And so I I love, Mm -hmm. I so relate to the story. And it's, it's interesting because it seems like we, there's this cultural thing where like, you can't be spiritual and make money. Like those two things, like there's a conflict. So Mm -hmm. in a lot of the women that I work with, they're like, we're spiritual, like we're like conscious spiritual women, you know, we're all about that stuff. And then, but then it's like, oh, but now go out and sell and go out and make money. And it's like, because you have to, you know, and it's like, how do part you of the that? equation. Yeah, it's, it's part, part of, of the equation. Yeah. yeah. So this is this is so excellent. That was my journey. I was a priestess at night. I dove, I read into wee hours of the night, books. I prayed, I meditated, I began practicing yoga, kundalini yoga. I I mean, I was Reiki certified, Reiki master, all those things, but they were separate from what I was doing in my daily life, not even work, but my daily life. So it's like, I was something behind the scenes, but I wasn't that in the the, the light of the day, (laughs) which is so funny when I say it. And that's when I downloaded this idea of sacred success. So even anything in my business that I do has a sacred success underlying in it. It's the merging of both. Cause that's what happened, Jill. Exactly. I realized I'm like, I feel something mysterious in me. I feel magic. I feel like, I feel like air parts and mysteries are shown to me at night. When I read those books, when I pray, when I journal, when I touch my crystals, which I have so many right in within a reach. Right. But then I was working in the mortgage industry at a time. And I went into mortgage industry in Manhattan, which is very masculine, very, you know, straight cut, very rigid. And that's who I was during the day. And then I love telling this story and I don't tell it too often. There was one closing that I was facilitating, closing of a mortgage on a, on a property. And it took two hours. Everybody around the table, as traditional as you can imagine, white shirts, ties, and all, you know, bells and whistles in a great conference room. And this woman was sitting across the other side of the table. So it was me and her and all these men. And nothing wrong with that, but that's just the culture of the industry. At the end of the closing, she came up to me with the keys in her hands, the keys to her property that she just purchased. And she held the keys like this. And she walked up to me and she said, will you bless these keys with me? 
And it took every, look, I'm still tearing up just thinking about it because that moment I realized that I cannot hide, that I discovered something that makes life different. So that's when I decided everything has to change. And I decided to leave mortgage industry, but that was, that's the only thing I knew to do. I didn't know how to blend that together. I just knew that the journey was calling me for something different. That's when I dove deeper into, well, what is this purpose thing about? What is this? People talk about purpose and there is, there is a way to be on purpose without knowing what your purpose is. You literally are purposeful in what you do, which I'm a huge fan of. But then there is an underlayer of energetic frequency of what we came here to express. And that's how I decided this is what purpose is. There is a way we came here to embody something. It doesn't matter what we do as much as expressing ourselves in a certain way, Our the energy that flows through us already all the time, becoming aware of it and consciously channeling it into something we do. For most people who realize this, they will begin to do something different. That's what happened to me. I knew that what I was doing wasn't aligned with me, even though I still love that industry very much. And I dream of someday going, inserting myself and bringing this energy into it, but it's not my calling right now. My calling right now is in coaching and mentoring and training and showing people how to blend the two. So that's when I became a coach. I actually went to nutrition school because I wanted to learn how to take care of this vessel. Nobody ever taught me how to take care of this vessel that this energy pours through. And so I went to nutrition school, but unbeknownst to me, I was getting certified as a health coach. Opened up a whole new industry. This was like 15 years ago, opened up a whole new industry I never knew existed. So I dove into in, in that direction and I knew that was my purpose. But for most people, it isn't, even now it's like I'm a coach, but I'm sure this is true for you, that the flavor of what I do changes and it shifts and it up levels. So attaching to something, this is what, this is my purpose. My purpose is to be a shoemaker or a dentist. And that's what I'm going to do. I think it happens very rarely that people know exactly and stick with it for life. Most of us, at least the people that I attract, and I'm sure it's true for you, we uncover layers of what we are here to deliver, and then we learn how to value it so we can exchange what we need for it, right? Which is what business is. But on a new earth is whether you make trinkets, like I don't want to do without my lip gloss. I always want somebody to make fantastic lip gloss that is healthy for me and shines on my lips. I don't, <laughs> I don't want people to start creating great, you know, jewelry and clothes. I want people who recognize that that's their purpose, but doing it with conscious engagement of the energy that pours through them with the value that they assign to it, not because somebody is willing to pay X, Y, Z for a lip gloss, but because they stand so much for a value of it that people love it because of what they, how it makes them feel and whether it's tangible items or services, which I know you and I are in, and many of, I'm sure the viewers, my, that's what my clients know that this, it's their purpose is, is to provide some kind of a service, standing in a value of the energy that we consciously pour into what we do, and then allowing ourselves to receive money, being in a sacred exchange with the money, not making it the evil, the necessary evil that provides food for me, but actually being in a sacred exchange of what it took for somebody to invest in whatever it is that they are investing, being in that sacred space when they invest and then provide a service that's even better than what they paid for. That's how we blend the two. And it's a journey because that's not what I grew up with. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I was I was leading a, in, in one of my programs. We were talking about it's all about up leveling different areas of your life. And we were mm -hmm. talking about this idea of up leveling in business. We were going to look specifically at career, business and what, mm -hmm. whatnot. And so uh, one of the people that in the program, she also coaches with me privately. And she was saying, you know, when you said we were going to focus because she doesn't have a business right now. Mm -hmm. That's not her focus right now. Yeah. She said, when you said we were going to focus on business, I was, I was going to tune out a little bit, but, but how I approached it, and this was just an intuitive download is I approached it with, let's look at your gifts. Yeah. I had everybody look at their gifts and it, it sounds very much like what you're talking about. It's like, it's like, that's for me. And you mentioned that 
we, we evolve, we change as, as who mm-hmm. we are in our business. Cause yeah, like it's, I am just moving with my gifts and, and like, yeah. I don't even really know what to call them, you know, like, yeah. but it's like, but I I'm in tune with them. I know what they feel like, and I'm still learning how, how to um, talk about what I do in a way that people understand, you know, but can you talk a little bit about, about like, how do we make that turn from, okay, I, I do feel purposeful. I feel like I'm living my life on purpose. Mm-hmm. How do I share that in a way that it it's becomes attractive for someone and they want to exchange for that? Yeah. yeah. This is, this is the part that most people right now that touch spirituality, turn their nose up on, meaning that all of a sudden they're spiritual, they're awake and they don't want to touch anything that's 3D. 3D meaning tangible, meaning something people can relate to. And the truth about human beings still is that even when I was floating in different in different dimensions, right? At night, during the day, my pain was I needed to pay my bills, right? I lived in Manhattan. It wasn't cheap. I needed to pay my bills. My pain wasn't you know, I don't feel fulfilled, although it got to that point and so at some point, but until it got to that point, my pain was I needed to pay my bills and I needed to know how to do it. Right. So we are still 3D human beings having this experience. We haven't floated off into a different dimension. We are still in a physical flesh that requires food, clothing, somewhere to live. And it better be fabulous because we, we desire and we, I think we all should have the best we can to be our best selves. And Eating ramen noodles is not healthy. When I don't take care of my body, and not that I was ever, I'm just being sarcastic about what some people put themselves through in a name of spirituality. Like I just had somebody, no judgment. I just had somebody email me the other day and say, everything you say, I am behind, but I cannot get behind getting paid for my energy and for my spirit gifts, my soul gifts. It goes against the grain. What grain? the grain somebody told you about because there is nothing in anything. And I I work with some very, without hierarchy, spiritually developed people, like my my mentors, my teachers on, on that side are, they all coming down, meaning there was a time we spent going up and going different dimensions. The work we're doing right now is bringing it back into, and I don't mean up and down, I mean different frequency. You could actually even look at it sideways and it's fine. 5D, 3D, this way nobody gets into a conversation of better or worse. It's just all next to each other. 3D means it's more tangible. Talking about what it is that we do in a way that people can understand. When I talk to people about business of the new earth, it sounds great. Do people want to pay for it? Most of the time, not. What will people pay for is my soul sucking business or my soul sucking job is no longer fulfilling me, drains me. I want to do something different that's going to inspire me. <laughs> people pay for that. I wake up in the middle of the night and I hear in my spirit, in my in my voice, in my heart, however people receive it, I hear a calling to do something different. And I am petrified to leave X, Y, Z that makes me money right now. I want to know how to do it, even though I'm petrified. That's what people will pay for, right? So we want to get into these like very lofty descriptions of what we do with energy, transmuting energy and shifting into 5D. And I can we can talk about it. I mean, tomorrow is a, when we're recording. This is July 25th. July 26th is a Mayan New Year. Did you know that? I just learned. It's a Mayan New Year. All of a sudden... Never heard of Mayan New Year. Tomorrow is a Mayan New Year. There are all these different offerings coming around from the people that I follow around Mayan New Year because we keep coming up with these things. I mean, they might have existed. Nobody cared. But all of a sudden, we get curious about it. And all of a sudden, we crave this something different. But what we really pay for is the thing that solves my daily problem that I am sitting with that I don't know how to get out of. So Believe me, I spent seven years counting, seven years trying to nail my niche, but not wanting to be put in a box, trying to talk about what I do in this different way that is, you know, lofty and different dimensional. And for seven years, my business like made a few hundred, few thousand. I had a good month and then nothing. 
because I wasn't putting my energy intentionally and purposefully behind this thing that I said, well, how do I talk about it in a way that people can hear it? And it's not about manipulation either. It's about serving. So think about it this way. If I talk about what I'm offering that I know makes a difference in a way that people cannot get behind, cannot understand, I'm not willing to pay for because it sounds great. It touches them right here, but it doesn't get all the way down to the root chakra so they can actually pull up their credit card and pay for it. That I am, that I am not being of service. I'm actually being of this service because I have a solution for something that it, that hurts but I am choosing to not make it tangible enough for people to understand this is the solution they need. So it's getting over our spiritual, you know, snob- snobism and bringing the energy, bringing the intention, bringing the sacredness, but also doing the work. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 I mean, it's, we, we have so much baggage around this and the whole sales conversation piece is just, we've, yeah, Mm -hmm. we, that is, that is the the work of a lot of people is if you really want to share your gifts and be in service, you've got to get over the, the, this view that you can't be spiritual and make money. Like it, it, yes. and, And honestly, like when I have said yes to big investments for myself, and my business, it's a spiritual experience. Yes. yes. Like it ch- just the conversation yep. and what you go through, it transforms you. And that's why, yes. you know, like some people are like, I, I had someone, um, this was in the previous iteration of my business when I was supporting parents and empowering their kids and bullying and all that. And I was talking about this on in a Facebook group, I think. And someone said, how can you charge for that? And I'm like, are you like, it's extremely valuable and it changes lives of the, you know, but I mean, yeah. people need to get to the place within themselves yeah. where they can say yes and pull, pull together their, I mean, we are all so prosperous. We yes. are all so about, you know, David, mm-hmm. who we've both worked yes. with, you know, mm-hmm. says everyone has the same amount of money in the yeah. world, right? This is such a gift like, to oh, hear that and be like, yeah, fabulous. Yeah. I don't know how, but somehow I believe that. I believe yeah. it's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do too. And and it's a really interesting perspective. For for anyone who does isn't aware of that. Yeah, it's it's this idea that every single human being on this planet has the access to the exact same amount of money. We mm-hmm. all have access. Yeah. Yes, people are in more situ- challenging situations than other people, of course, right? But it doesn't mean that access isn't available. Correct. Yes. Yes. You know, I speak to money and I haven't said it in a few months. So here, maybe I'm going to bring the conversation back. For several years, when I started doing this work, I kept hearing money is our last frontier. And I'm like, I don't understand what it means, but I started speaking about it because when we speak for me, at least that's why I love these conversations because things come through me and I'm like, oh, that's an interesting way of looking at it. (laughs) So What I kept hearing is money is our last frontier because it is on planet earth as it is. We have made it the most valuable thing. We really have. Like you really, I don't care what anybody wants to say. You can't do much without money. You really, we really can't do much without money. And however you want to twist it, how, oh, I don't care about money. I don't want to care about money, whatever, fine. But if you want to make a difference in the world, you're going to need money and you can't be starving and make a difference. So you better have money for all your basic needs and better have more and spill over. That's what I stand for. Have more than you need and be in the overflow and then invite people to to sip from the overflow (laughs) so they can raise their frequency. Right. But I so so it's still coming. It's still coming up. So it's still true. Money is the last frontier because it is the most to me the most instant feedback of where I am in owning the value of what I provide, owning the value of who I am, of what I, of what I am offering and how it is lending. Am I being of service or not? If I'm being of service, people want more and they're willing to exchange what's most valuable, which is money. Let's not talk about love right now because people will be like, love is most valuable. Yes, but love doesn't pay bills, right? So like we got to get a little bit more uh, pragmatic, even in a different dimensions, even in as we're working with spirit. What if, what if 
spirit speaks to us through money and says, the more you own the value of who you are and the energy you intentionally provide, the more I will show you where it is. And it's up to you to, to have it, to take it, to exchange it, <laughs> to receive it. But I'll show you where it is, right? So it's the last frontier because it's going to teach us and it already does. Like you just said, right? You said, when I make decisions... It is like a sacred experience. The more I invest, the more I grow. Yes, I believe that. And I, I just got chills. And I believe money is a beautiful tool that helps us see that. That helps us see how do I value the energy that I am? How do I value the gifts that I have? Do I value them or do I try to, or do I try to be like this person who emailed me? It's against my grain. But you are exchanging your energy, which is actually the most valuable thing. <laughs> you are exchanging your energy and your time for peanuts, probably, because nobody who's wealthy says that. Nobody who's wealthy writes that email <laughs> and says, right? Like exchanging energy for money is, first of all, they wouldn't have time to even write that email because they're too busy making a difference in the world. <laughs> so money is our last frontier. And I love using money as a tool to show me how deeply do I believe in a value of what I'm creating? How much more creative can I get in offering it in a way that supports people in seeing this is the solution? How much more can I use money as a feedback of the space that I take up in the world? A lot of people are afraid of having too much money because of a space that they get to take up by having more. Bigger decisions, bigger conversations, bigger risks, but the risks I want to take. I'd want to take that risk then a risk of daily survival. Will I eat today or not? Like, no, thank you. <laughs> right? So it's our last frontier because it is the most tangible way for us to see immediately. Is my frequency high or is it, or is it like on the ground because money is not showing up? When I am in a high vibration, when I am in gratitude, in love, in joy, money just shows up. People want to be with me and work with me. They just, they don't even care what I offer. They just want to be in whatever it is, right? I'm sure it's happened to you. Like you just said that, right? Woman who was not interested in business. She's like, all right, fine. <laughs> I'll be in whatever you're doing. But that's what happens. And then it's an instant feedback for me to tell me, yes, my frequency is high. My frequency is high because people want to be in whatever it is that I'm offering. And then I do my job to sustain and expand the field that I'm in. And then the more people come into that field, it's true for everybody. It's true for you, Jill, and everybody watching. If I'm willing to keep expanding the field of possibility and people enter into it immediately, they don't even have to do one call or anything. Just by buying into that field, I mean, that's why we both probably chose to work with David, because he represents field of possibility. And we wanted to be in his vibration as close as we possibly could. <laughs> Yes, so that's who absolutely. we get to that's who we get to be and if we diminish our gifts if we diminish why should somebody pay for that well, nobody would ever i wouldn't i could never charge for that then you are depriving somebody of a gift of benefiting from your energy all right that's my that's my monologue on that <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it anna it's perfect um so do you have any tips for the woman and i and i know probably the vast majority of women listening to this probably have some version of this of where, because it, it is, it is a journey in and of itself to own your value, to yes. actually see yourself as valuable enough to charge and to charge well for it. So yes. any tips around that? Oh, I have so many, so many, let me see what, what comes in right now. Ah. <sighs> I mean, there are, there are tricks of a mindset that we could do. There are, there are exercises that I do with my clients where it's like increasing your inner bank account, where you physically can feel that your inner, inner bank account is rising and then your external bank account rises. But more than anything, yes, it is a journey. Do not expect to wake up tomorrow after listening to this. And all of a sudden you'll believe 100% in the value of what you create. For me, what happened was that the more I the more I invited people into my work and the more that I saw the difference in them, the more I believed in the value of what I was doing. But we don't have to wait to see the evidence. So it really is, I love journaling. And journaling about what changes for people, even if I don't know yet, the possibility, it's like future pacing. 
So I imagine somebody buys into whatever it is that I am offering. They invest in, they come into the program and I will then I'll make up name Jane and I'll say, wow, this is what's happening for Jane. And I will journal like a stream of consciousness for 10, 15 minutes, all the things that have happened for Jane as a result of saying yes to herself, whether she came to any calls, did any, anything at all, just by saying yes to herself, I will journal for 10, 15 minutes about all the amazing things that happened for Jane as a result of that. And it raises my, my belief in what I'm doing. And all of a sudden, the rest of me gets on board. My mind gets on board to say, oh, okay, maybe what she's doing is valuable. Well, let's, let, let's back her up. Let's back off from this is not valuable and let's maybe give some evidence that it is, right? So that's what's coming in to share with the audience right now. Most of my day, and not a lot of it, I'm very much about physical action, which I know you are too. Taking action in your business, showing up, doing the work. We don't like social media. I actually love social media because it's the easiest way for me to show up and be of service. But some people don't. Well, learn to love it as a channel to share what you have so people can find you. And doing all of that backed by hours of me doing whatever I need to do to believe in what I'm doing makes a huge difference. If I don't believe in what I'm doing, nobody will come in and pay for what I'm doing. So I will do, and this is after years of doing work on myself, right? I can say it. You have to believe in it. I'm not even mean pretending. I don't mean pretend to believe. I mean, do whatever you get, you can do. Find tools, find teachers, which just like you, Jill, and many of your guests, I'm sure, all of us have different tools. I just gave you journaling. There are so many different ways to raise your belief in what you are doing. And if you're doing something that either you created results based on, like something changed in your life, that's how I started. I created my own journey and I said, oh, other people, other people might want to know how I did it. So I started a business out of it, right? Or you witness somebody else and you're like, I totally get how she did it. I don't believe I can do it yet, but let me believe her belief. Let me start implementing and offering. And through it, I create my belief. So journaling is what's coming really strongly, like writing future pacing about the your a beautiful client that will invest in your program, what will happen for them? Future doesn't exist. We create it. So why not create it in a most beneficial way for you, for your program and for your client? <laughs> yes. I, that is such a powerful exercise. Um, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. And I can see using that in a lot of different ways too, yeah. cause you could, yeah. So, um, yeah. and I, oh my God, I just literally just made a video. I'm just editing it right now exactly on this thing about if you aren't bought into you, nobody else is going to be like, we, that is where the work is. You know, we, we have to spend the time, spend the effort to really like love ourselves and value ourselves and our gifts, or it's not, that's where you'll struggle. That's where Mm -hmm. you'll struggle to get the clients. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why in business, I think it, it, okay. So I'm going to loop it around into a prior question. The the level to which I love myself, believe in myself and believe in what I'm doing is the level to which money comes in. Period. I can say all day long, I love myself. I love myself. If I don't love myself enough to offer what I am creating and then invite people to work with me and hold, hold a space for them to come in, then I don't love myself enough. If I don't love myself enough to have the best food, the, the most beautiful clothes that, that make me feel good, it doesn't have to be expensive, just things that make me feel high vibration. Or like I have flowers, like, and they gorgeous. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> I look at flowers, they're sitting on my desk. Why? Because I want to constantly be in a high vibration, high frequency. I'm very visual. So I love seeing beautiful things. I get them at the farmer's market. Some people would say, wow, what a waste of money. No, it raises my vibration. And the more that it raises my vibration, the more people are coming in. And now now I can say I love myself because I love myself enough to exchange money for these beautiful flowers. And now I raise the vibrations people coming to me. So it's like a circle and money tells me that I love myself because I have an instant feedback. I have enough to exchange for what I want to have beautiful things around me. And whether it's health or it doesn't, like, I'm, I'm visual. Some people, it may be health. They want to have the, the latest health, access to the latest health technologies, right? To to increase their, their vitality. I mean, I'm all into exercise, but I'm 
there are some people who are like, want to be at the cutting edge of the latest technology. Why not have the money for it? Why not love yourself enough to do the work, to put your work out into the world, to serve in a way that you have enough to have the access to whatever the cut, latest cutting technologies in health or whatever area is more important, most important to you. So it is about self-love. Absolutely. Believe in myself, love myself. And I'm going to say this too. If I don't believe in myself, there is no way I can believe in anybody who's coming into my field. Meaning if clients invest in their programs that I offer and I don't believe in myself, there is no way I can hold a space for them to believe in themselves. You can't give what you don't have. So if I don't believe in myself, I don't mean all the way. I mean, there's always the next level, right? But if I don't believe in myself, I there is no way I can hold a space for my clients to come in and believe in themselves. So it's a disservice too. <laughs> it's This is so spot on. Everyone loop this last little part. I mean, the whole, this whole conversation has been so powerful, but like, that's, that's exactly it. I mean, if you question whether or not it's worth you loving yourself, like it sounds mm-hmm. so cliche, but like, no, we it literally, and how you know, if you're loving yourself enough, if, if what I'm hearing you say, Anna is correct that you know because of what your how many clients are coming to you what your bank account looks like what you're yeah. like what is showing up to show yeah. you that you are aligned yeah. with yes. yourself yeah right? do i still choose based on how much money is coming in or do i choose based on what is loving to me so sometimes it even looks like you really need this money but this is not the most aligned client and the most loving thing for me and for this person would be to say no right if i love myself enough i will say no and trust that there is plenty of more or more more debt coming from. So it works in so many different ways. But yeah, like, do I love myself enough to book the vacation that I need? Do I love myself enough to have the massage that I need? And all of that comes with money. So this whole conversation of like, money isn't spiritual. No, I mean, I grew up Catholic. I never believed in Bible. I read Bible now that I healed my God wound. And there is nothing in the Bible that says money isn't spiritual. <laughs> Yeah. So there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been a fabulous conversation, Anna. Um, and you have a wonderful gift. Can you share that gift with our audience? Yes. So it's the five steps that I have created in my life when I was asking and questioning if I had everything and it meant nothing. How do I create a lot more than I had? and with meaning. And it was about coming down to purpose. And I frame purpose very differently, which you got a little bit of a taste of. So it's not the thing we do, it's who we are that then directs us into the thing we do, which is the medicine we are here to birth for the new earth. And then who are we here to serve, which I call divine appointments. It isn't just random people with money on the bank in a, in a credit card. They are divine appointments. So treating it with sacredness and then having a healthy relationship with money. So all of that I put together in these five steps and I share it in what I call awakening, activating sacred success, birthing your soul's work in alignment with your purpose and prosperity, even if you don't know your purpose yet. Love, love it. <laughs> I will definitely be downloading that. Thank you so much. That is so generous. And I, I think our My listeners will adore that. So Anna, I just want to thank you. Is there anything else you wanted to leave us with before we, we close out here this fabulous conversation? Yes, just take a risk. We either risk staying where we are, and that's a risk too. That's, there's a huge risk to staying where we are, and we t- or there is a risk in doing something, being something we've never had. And where we are right now on planet Earth, anybody who's tuning into this conversation, whether you're a business owner or not, you better start thinking like one because you get to create your own economy. I know you and I are familiar with the term, create your own economy and do it in collaboration with the universe, with divine, with the spirit, the most beautiful thing we could do right now, even if we don't experience the effect of it, because the results might take generations, we are shifting our relationship with worth and value and money, but that's not going to happen right now. And if it's not going to happen, if we don't participate, so participate, take a risk, be willing to give it a try. What will happen if I believe that what it is that I am here to do, I am here to offer right now actually has value and people are willing to pay. What would happen? Take a risk. 
Perfect way to wrap mm-hmm. up. Thank you so much, Anna, for being here, sharing your expertise and your, your wisdom and, and all of your loveliness with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Thank you for creating the space for it too. Very important conversation. Thank you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're welcome. And to our listeners, what nugget are you taking away from this conversation that you will go and immediately implement in your business and in your life? Go ahead and put that in our Facebook group. And when you make a comment, you are added to our drawing for some fabulous prizes. So thanks everyone for listening. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.